Welcome, I am your pastor, Pastor Omar Ellison with Salt and Light Covenant Church. Open up your heart as we enter in to hear a word from the Lord. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Are you found today? I was blind, had the scales on my eyes. I was blind, but now I see. I see y'all. Receive that spiritually. I see. I was lost. But I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Glory. Now, grace in that hymn is a noun. And we know we learned back in elementary school that a noun is what? A person, place, or a thing. And we put that adjective amazing with grace. I don't know about y'all, but I can only think of one person. His name is Jesus. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Hallelujah. And when you think of Jesus, you can't help but automatically think of the Father. And when you think of Jesus, you can't help but automatically think of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Or we've coined him as what? Our buddy. But we all know that they are one. They're one. And so you can't depend on one without the other. You can't acknowledge one without the other. They're one. Amen. Amen. So having grace means receiving all the gifts of God. Everything that you need, you receive it. From the fullness of his grace, we have received one blessing after another, after another, after another. Grace is freely given by God. It is free meaning there is nothing that you can do to earn it. You can't earn grace. It's just freely given. That's why you can't dictate who can receive it and who can't receive grace. That's not our place. We'll say, we quick to say what somebody does or does not deserve. Don't work with his grace. He gives it freely to whom he please. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's freely given by Jesus and it free, it's free meaning there's nothing you can do to earn it. Grace is free in the sense that when something is done or is given, you don't look for nothing. You ain't, you're not expecting anything in return. Amen. Ephesians 2 and 8. It states that for by grace you have been saved through faith. So you've been saved by grace through faith, believing your faith. He's given us the measure by your faith. You saved by grace. Amen. And that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. So we've already established that it is a gift. And then you have to look and say, he's grace. And he's the gift. He gives grace. He's the gift. He's the rewarder. But he's the reward. No greater reward. He'll reward you. But he's the reward. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So then you look and you think, you say, now, when's the last time you extended grace? And I ain't talking about that grace like my grace, your grace. I'm talking about when the last time you extended amazing grace. Hallelujah. You can say with our grace, and I took him over there three times now. She asked to borrow some money and I told her, you don't have to pay it back. I even gave her a little extra. And then here she come next, the, the very next month asking for some more money. See, that's our grace. That's the kind of grace we give. And we get so bad with it. Now, I helped her last year. But this coming year, all the way a year in advance. A year in advance. Now, y'all, here we go talking about what we will and what we won't do. Well, a year in advance. You don't know what's going to be happen between, during that time. But you, you, you're you talking and speaking off of your feelings right now because you're not extending amazing grace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let me get right by where I am. Okay. Or you look at how the Lord has helped you. You look at the plans and this is it. Don't come to ask me to help you no more. 
That's how we'll do it. But again, it's free. And all you need to do to receive it is to ask and believe. Ask and believe. And when I say ask, I don't mean like pleading, begging. We don't, we don't have to do that. Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I, see this is me. This was me, the old caller. Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I need you to cover me. Lord, I need you to let that money break. Lord, I can't make it without you. I need you right now, Lord. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. And I don't know about y'all, but you've heard that those prayers get no further than the ceiling. Well, with me, they wouldn't get no further than right here. Here go, here go the prayers right here. Because it was apart from him. I didn't realize it then that I had to acknowledge him with these prayers. Hallelujah. My prayers weren't getting up further than my head. But then I was given another perspective. Thank you, Pastor. Because I was given another perspective. He said, when you pray, if you believe in, because me saying, Lord, I need you. Do that sound like I believe that what I'm asking him? No. But I thank him now because I can say, I thank you, Lord, for the covering. I thank you, Lord, for the healing. Thank you, Lord, for the turnaround. I thank you, Lord, for the money breaking. I might not know how or when or where, but I know and I believe it's going to break. It's going to come through. Now, you see the power behind that. You see the difference in that. That's how amazing grace is. Hallelujah. That's how you have to pray. And I was lost back when I look over my life. I was. There was a time that I was lost and I was blind. And spiritually, I'm I'm referring spiritually now. I got to be honest. And a lot of things I knew. I knew what I was doing. Just like you may look back and say, yeah, I knew what I was doing. But then there were some instances I did not know what I was doing. Because I was leaning and depending on Carla. Thinking Carla could do it. Not knowing you can't do it apart from him. And then why is this not working? Why is this not coming together? And then I got to the point, y'all, I giving them crocodile tears and, and be praying. and Oh, Lord, please. I don't know if y'all re- remember baby boy to Roger P. Henson. Yvette. She went to Jody's house to pick up Jojo. And she telling Jody, man, my car ain't, the car ain't working. I need, I need you to give me the money. And Jody looked at us and said, that ain't my problem. <laughs> and slammed the door. And what she said, she went running back to the car with a friend and she said, he don't love me no more. That's how I felt, y'all. That's how I was feeling that the Lord didn't love me anymore. Lord, I thank you. And then had the audacity to be blaming him for my decisions and my choices. Come on now. Was blaming him. But there again, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I was operating off of the choices and the results I was getting was off of the choices and decisions I had decided to make. And then, you know, every time when Jesus, my sister used to sing a song, said, if you have to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up. And every time he'd reach down to pick me up, I'd knock his hand back. Talking spiritually now. I'd knock his hand back. I got this. Bria tell me all the time, okay, Mr. Pooh, you got this, okay? She tell me a little Mr. Pooh. But yes, I, he would. And then he'd come again and he'd reach way down to pick me up. I'd knock him again. I don't need his help. I got this. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. But that's not how it was. And religion, religion was teaching me what? If you don't do it, so that's why I was doing it and trying so hard. Because religion then taught me what? You got to do. You got to do. And if you don't do, he ain't going to do this, this, this. He ain't going to do this, this, this. That's what religion had taught me. But you know what religion didn't teach me? Religion, religion didn't teach me. Now you won't ever be able to do it. Mm. Glory. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Constantly telling me and drilling me, I got to do, do, do. You got to do this. You got to do that. 
you got to change, you got to change, but never told me, but you won't be able to do it. You, you won't be able to do it. If we could do it, then we could do it all. We don't need him. Come on. You'll never be able to do it. Couldn't fix it. Love never fails. Love never fails. Didn't realize I was operating apart from his love. And that's all it is. I had not received his love. Because once I received his love, there again, I told you, the prayer life changed. And then I began to see his results. Every time. Over and over and over again. Hallelujah. I was digging deeper and deeper, y'all. Digging deeper and deeper. But I thank him that that... That when I just allowed him to change me, change the, pros- the perspective of how I was looking at it and how I was praying and said, okay, Lord, here I am because I can't do it by myself. And then that next time he reached down, I grabbed hold, y'all. I'm coming up out of this. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but I'm found. He found me. And I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it was just taking accountability. The decisions and the choices I was making, taking the accountability. We don't take the accountability. We make the choices, we make the decisions, and there again, I was blaming him and everybody else. He thinking he didn't love me, but he had already told us in his word that he'll never leave us, nor forsake us. Didn't he tell us that? Hallelujah. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. See, I wasn't reading the Bible. I was just going off what religion said and whatever they got up there and said. And I was just taking it to heart and taking it in and taking it in. And it wasn't working. And I wasn't reading it because if I'd read, it is written. We know written don't change. And see, Proverbs 3 and 5 would have told me, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. And verse 6 solidifies it. It says, in all your ways, everything you do, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. And that's what I was not doing. I was not acknowledging him. I was leaning to Carla's understanding, thinking I could do it. Thinking I could do it. I get it. And I probably did it for a little while here and there. I probably was doing the lean and, and with the matrix. You know how you do that lean? But eventually you're going to fall. But how do many of you know that when you lean on Jesus, he won't let you fall. When you lean on Jesus, he won't let you fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everywhere you go again, acknowledge him. In everything you do, Keep him first and he will direct your path. Acknowledging him will keep you from making some bad decisions, some bad choices that you'll later regret. You've made a choice, I don't know about you, but I've made a choice or a decision and I say, oh, I shouldn't have did that. Shouldn't have said that. But grace, covering, his mercy, grace. He's with you and he's in us. He's with us and he's in us. And I thank him for it. Thank you, Lord. In a little while, you're beating yourself up. And so now, I'm believeful. Yes, I done made up a word. I'm believeful, meaning I'm full of belief. Be full of belief. You know how you used to be careful? We don't want to be full of cares. We cast our cares on him. So now I just say I'm believeful. I'm full of belief. I believe. And there's nothing you can do or say to change that. Do I get it right every time? No, I don't. And then I quickly say, "Mm, that ain't lining up with him. Get back in line and watch it work. Together for his good. He's got me. He's got you. He'll work it out. Almighty God. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Again, I once was lost and I was blind, but now I'm found. The scales have been removed. 
And when things present themselves, I line it up with him. And I'm learning to respond with Jesus. When life comes, how will you respond? I'm learning to respond with Jesus. And again, I say I'm learning to respond because I don't always get it right. People will try you. They be testing you. Yes, yes. Like, ooh, old Carla. You got it right up in yonder and there. But I've learned to let my response be Jesus. Yes, yes. Did you hear when she said, we're calling on the name of Jesus. Yes. Your situation has to change when you call that name yes. Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. You just allow him to effortless, effortlessly change you. Again, I was trying to do it, and you never ever be able to do it, but let, allow him to do it. Just acknowledging him, believing him, and trusting him, and watch how he works it. Watch how he does it. Now, I know we're all different, because when I look back over my life, and there's things, I've had good days, and I've had bad days, but all of my good days, all of my good days now, they outweigh my bad. Now that's my story. Yes. And each and every one of you, you have a story. Yes. And see, don't uh, ever allow anyone to try to write your story. Right. Don't even allow them to rewrite your story. Right. Don't allow them to redact your story. Yes. And redacting, I'm, I'm in public records, we have to do redactions, meaning you black it out where nobody can not see it. Uh -huh. Don't let nobody redact your story. It's your story. It's yours, and it's yours for a reason. And if you, be, if you don't be careful, if you're not mindful of what they're trying to do, they'll try to rewrite your story and put some of their story in it. That's your story. This is my story. And then you remind them quickly. There's only one author and finisher in my life. That's who can write and rewrite and redact and whatever he wants to do. Because you know when the Lord removes it, he replaces it with love. But see, a lot of times when man or your friend, it could be friends, be family, who when they try to remove something, they try to replace it with a this. What I mean is you used to do that, but now you do this. Yeah, now you're doing this. That's not love. And then guess what? I quickly remind them. I thank the father for Jesus because he paid for this and that. He paid for that and this. Amen. Amen. So don't let them rewrite your story. Don't let them compare. Because sometimes people will try to compare your story to their story. No comparison. Yeah, we have some similarities. If I was to take a poll right now, somebody would prefer chicken. Somebody would prefer seafood. Your color is blue. Yours is green. But guess what? If I took the poll and said, God is good, all of us agree and we'll say what? All the time. See that? See that? Y'all already do it. Yeah. God is good. I'll, see, we're agreeing there. We're similar there. So your stories may be similar, but your story is your story. And embrace your story. Embrace where he's brought you from. I embrace it because there were, I don't want to sit in that. Because there were times I felt disgusted and busted and hurt, yes. I, I, disappointed. Yes. Yes. I don't, I don't want to sit in that. Yes. But I allowed him to come and say, okay, we're going to rewrite that. Yes. That's right. See, now you've received my love. Yes. So that's not named among you anymore. We thank him. Yes. When I look now, y'all, I'm at chapter 54 in my book. and ooh, <laughs> Y'all, this is a bestseller here. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Lord for my book, my chapters, hallelujah, I'm not where I was in chapter 9 and 10, I'm not, don't judge, you know you've heard, don't judge a book by its cover, yeah my cover didn't look too good, but that end, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, it's how you end, and when you look on the end of that book, y'all I'm cheesing, Look a little busted and disgusted at the, on the cover, but I thank him. I thank him for my chapters. That's why I say I want to allow anyone to rewrite my book. 
you have your book and your chapters. And guess what? If you received his love in chapter 26 and, and I didn't get it to chapter 50, well, it wasn't chapter 50, but you know, it was a little early, but, but so be it, right? What we rejoice in and say, she got it. Rejoice with me and say, she got it. Don't, don't look at, don't get moved off of how long it took me to get it. Because we will do that. If we're praying for something for the Lord, to, it could be a family member or a friend and we just, oh, they ain't no get it. They ain't no, well, what about you? Flip back through your book. Holy Ghost will tell you quick, remind you. Yeah, will call it chapter 11 now. Remember chapter 11? Oh, amen, amen. And so now, now what? Amazing grace. You're you, you able to extend that grace now. And you don't have it. I'm not going to love you from a distance. I'm going to love you right there where you are. Because that's where he's meeting you, where you are. And he loves you. So why am I to say, well, nah, she ain't got up here yet. He ain't got up here yet. No. Thank you for the chapter. No matter which chapter you got it in, you got it. And that's where we're going to stand and rejoice. Saying, Lord, we thank you that we got it. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I've been sharing and telling you about amazing grace. Will you turn with me to 2 Corinthians 12th chapter, the ninth verse. Now I'm re reading from the New King James Version. And he said to me, this is the father talking. And he said to Carla, put your name there. Because he's talking to you. He's talking to you, he's talking to me. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. My dear God, you mean he knew we were going to be weak? Now, I love the Amplified version. Amplified says it like this. My grace is sufficient for you. My love and kindness and my mercy are more than enough. Oh, what, now y'all just got me right here. Always available regardless of the situation. Now, dear God. For my power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. Stop, 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 stop. Glory, let's break this in down here. My, my Jesus, my grace is sufficient for who? You. Me, you. Me, you. My grace is sufficient for you. And when I looked up sufficient, it says what? It's enough. It's just right. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Thank you, Lord. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough. More than enough. I think of sometimes when I'm cooking. And I'll cook. And sometimes for me, Brian Brandon, that's just enough. We, we didn't eat, we full, that was just enough. And then sometimes I'll cook, and I have so much food, I'm like, ooh, that's more than enough. We can eat on that tomorrow, too. Mike can get it Tuesday, when, you know. They don't go too many days, y'all, not so nice. <laughs> do them leftovers too many days, but amen. Sometimes, mostly Brandon, he'll help me knock it on out. But then, y'all, there have been times I went up in the pantry or in the cupboard or the, the, the cabinet, and didn't have enough. Like, whatever I was planning to cook, I'm like, oh, I got that little bit of rice. That's not enough. But when your father telling you it's more than enough, always, always available, more than enough, regardless of the situation. And I just begin to say, well, dear God, I said, well, y'all think about that now. Always available, meaning you don't have to make appointments. If just starting right now today, you go out, you got to go to the nail salon for the latest. You go into the nail salon, you got to get your nails done, I get a pedicure, you get your eyelashes. What? Now, sometimes you have to make an appointment or it's going to be a wait. 
And sometimes she'll say, one hour, it'll be one hour away. You know, it's, it'll be a while, right? <laughs> you can't go right in. But always available. See, you got this. I'm talking spiritually, but I'm giving it to you naturally because that's how it's going to manifest. You think about it. If any time of the day you walked into the nail salon and you walked right to the bowl, put your feet in there. Yes, sir. Water already ready. You walk right up to the table and put your hands up. No waiting. Always, y'all. That's the always available. Fellas, I ain't leave y'all out. What if y'all went to the barbershop? Come on now, y'all go to the barbershop. Y'all either have to make an appointment. Uh, hey, man, I got two heads in front of you. Man. You know, it's like that, right? No, you walking in, definitely. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, and sitting in the chair. He flapping out the little thing and putting it around you. And you can, anytime, anytime of the day, whether it's the busy hour, whether it's whenever, always available. Dear God, you think about with, with groceries. If I just went and grabbed the macaroni out, go back a week from now and, oh, I'm going to make macaroni. No, do I have any macaroni? Oh, yeah, I got a box of this. In other words, it's just steady replenishing. It's just steady replenishing. Lacking nothing, y'all. Everything you need. When you think about it, any situation, he said, regardless of the situation, regardless of the situation, always available. Always available. I said, thank you, Jesus. No more appointments. You got to get your oil chain. Just pull right on up. Go right on in. You, you know, the other cars might be, you be saying, I'm going in front of them. Because you believe in. You believe full. You believe full. So you can go on right on in. I said, Lord, if, now Walmart, y'all, on Tennessee Street. Whether I'm going for one thing or it's a buggy or things. It's always a wait. And I said, now, Lord, you telling me she'll be saying, um, Carla, I'll um, come to lane eight, come to register eight. And I'm looking at y'all, and buggies everywhere around me and the people. Carla, come on to register eight. And I'm like, Lord, I'm breaking all these people. <laughs> but, amen. And he says, they had the same opportunity. It was open. Obviously, they choosing to stand in line. Or it might be just something they haven't received my love, Carla. Because I'll be wondering that sometimes, you know, we're different. We're raised different. You have to, you have to realize we are different. And so things that I may look at something and think that's how it should be. If somebody else, the next person wasn't raised like that. And so I can't, well, they different. Uh, no, my way right. That's no, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. We're different for a reason. And again, we have our own stories. But we've got to learn to be respectful and mindful of how someone's different. Or guess what? Let's learn to respect each other's opinion. I ain't got to try to force my opinion on you. And Now you see the way. Now see what I'm saying. Now see what I'm... No, 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 no. You entitled to your opinion. That's why you're different. That's not to say my opinion is correct. But let's learn to, now we're not going to fall out about it. I'm not going to sit and argue with you about it. But I can respect to say, oh, okay, amen. I didn't think about it like that. Amen, you know, that's your choice. And that, there again, you making the choice, we making the decisions. And when you're making, if you don't choose him, you're going to get your results. And I can tell you now, yo, that ain't going to be good. If you're doing it apart from him, right. if we're doing it apart from him, you got to acknowledge him. He's already told us in everything, in everything, every move you make, every step you take, acknowledge him. Amen. Amen. You know I throw him out there. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. And see, that's the other biggest lie that you can't have fun. You got to be a robot. Don't you? you do that don't say that don't go there don't where is there freedom in that if the Lord said he want me free ha shot it over my key the Lord said he wants me free free to live live speaking live Lord I thank you 
being free. This thing is fun. I don't know about y'all. I'm having the best fun I've had. Because when I was of the world, because I was, we're we're in the world now. We're not of this world. Mother done told us about our visible home. So we're in this world, but I was actually of the world. Doing any and everything I wanted to do. And so I wasn't free. I was trying to please man. I was trying to be a man pleaser. And I was saying, what? what? Your decision, you choosing. You got a choice. But I was choosing to do it my way. Or trying to please someone else. And don't you know when you're trying to please, you'll never be able to please man. Ever be able to please man. You won't. They're going to want something else. And then you do that, they're going to want something else. And they're going to want something else. And you, every time you're doing it, well, I don't, I don't really want to do it. Don't do it then. You don't want to do it? Don't do it. Trust him. Take him at his word. Be a leader. If all y'all get up right now and walk out and say, we going to wherever. If I don't want to go, I'm not going. Amen. So don't let folks be trying to convince you and say, well, we, we all going. We had look past the even going. No. If I run it by him, uh-huh. Amen. again, this is my story. Right. If it's not lining up with what he said, and he said, don't go, don't say it, don't do Amen, Lord. Amen. And if I have to be by myself. But guess what? We're never alone. Yeah. We're never alone. Yeah. And that's, a, that's the beauty in it. You're never alone. He's with us and in us. Yeah. And so now I know and realize and recognize that I'm in this world, but I'm definitely not of this world. And I just give him glory for that. That when I look back where I used to be. And if you ain't there yet, so be it. That's not my place to be telling you, you better get it right. No. That's between you and Jesus. But I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to love 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 you. Because we were also taught right here in Saudi to become love. We got to become love. We got to become love. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. He says, regardless of the situation, for my power is being perfected. Perfected. Meaning it's already what? That's already perfect. It's already perfect. It's just being perfected in your life. Hallelujah. And it is completed, meaning it's already complete. When you receive stuff, I know when I received my healing, thank you, Lord, everything was speaking contrary to it. Every report, not a one. I say the most sheep. Not a one report, y'all, would line up with what he had told me. And I said, okay, Lord. And I did, I asked him, I said, Lord, at what point will your report line up with theirs? Glory. Glory. He said, except no, it may not ever. But are you going to trust me? You've seen the results of my report. And if I said it, that's enough. That's enough for me, y'all. And I'm going to stand and I'm rooted and I'm grounded in his word. That from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, I'm healed, I'm whole, and I'm complete. And it's his power. And he gets that glory. You get the glory, Lord. You get the glory. I remember Pastor telling us, now if you ain't going to receive it, don't be out there trying stuff. If you ain't believing it. And I did. I said, I want that. I want that. Because I saw my family from my great grandmother to my grandmother to my mother taking medicine after medicine after medicine. I said, that won't be named them on me. For me now. I'm going to trust you, Lord. No matter what the naysayers say. No matter what anything, come and try to whisper. Because it does, y'all. Because sometimes I might feel something. Mm-mm. No, you ain't. You better line up. You better line up. Not focusing on that. I tell Brian Brandon all the time, pull a positive. 
in every neg- negative situation, there is a positive. His name is Jesus. And when you put your focus there and begin to call on Jesus, he'll reveal more positives to you. He's your positive. 20 negatives in a situation. That one positive. He just said, my power is perfected. Perfect power. And I thank you, Lord God, that I have received it. You are great. He's awesome. And he is worthy of the praise. I told y'all this is the best chapter. I just started this chapter. Just started this chapter. And you know, sometimes when things going so good, you be kind of, I'm going to be honest, you be like, Oh, when, something, when something bad about to happen now, nah, something going, you know, because everything been going so good. Yeah. It's been so good with him. Yeah. And it's not that life hasn't come to see me. It's what was my response. Yeah. Y'all, my response been different. Yeah. I've been calling that name too, Sister Chantel. Yeah. I've been calling Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Has to change. Yeah. It has to bow. Yeah. If it ain't lining up with him Jesus power in that name is perfected it's completed and it shows itself most effectively in your weakness again that said to me he knew I was going to be weak he knew it was going to be times I was going to be weak but he was like don't you worry I got this I'm finna perfect my power right in this situation. Don't you know a bad situation can turn around for his good? Yeah, something you thinking like, this ain't looking right. This ain't, mm mm-mm. Don't worry about how it started. It's how it finished. Because we already know he does it from the end to the beginning. Amen. Brendan always reminded me, we can't lose, mate. He called me mate. We can't lose. You can't lose in this. You cannot lose in this, y'all. God is so good. Life is going to come. Yes, we know this. But what would be your response? Amazing grace will be my response. My response will be Jesus. He's so good. He's so kind. He's so merciful. And I thank him through it all. Through it all, I've learned to lean on Jesus because I know he won't let me fall. Love never fails. I thank you, Lord, he said, in everything to give thanks. And you're giving him thanks because you know the end result is going to be good. So go ahead and thank him and praise him. Don't worry about somebody looking to me. Now, she praising in that I sure am because you don't know my story or the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain and what I had to go through to get here. You'll never understand my praise. Stop trying to figure it out. Because we will. We, when you can meet people think they know everything and they be just trying to figure it out. What is that? Why are you doing that? And it ain't for you to figure out. Get in your little chapter in your book. Stay in your story. This is my story. And I'm embracing it because he's brought me from a man a long ways. He's brought me from a man a long ways. I've experienced some hurts, some losses, some disappointments. But through it all, through it all, thank you, Lord. Depression tried to sit. Sickness tried to sit. But his grace, he stood right there with me. You going to get it, daughter. Ah, I'm here to pick you up. Thank you, Lord. Like I told y'all, he reached that letter. I'm not knocking his name like this time. Mm-mm-mm. And I've been running with Jesus ever since. He has not failed me yet. He has not failed us yet. I look out over this audience. He ain't failed y'all yet. I don't know your story. I don't know what y'all have been through other than if you shared something with me. So when I look and I see now this result, y'all looking good. Y'all looking good. You don't look like what you've been through. You don't look like what you've been through. 
And he gets that glory. He gets that glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When I was making choices and decisions, and I just kept trying to cover it up. You know how we put a Band-Aid over, put a Band-Aid over. After a while, you rip it off, it's still right there. Because I didn't allow him to get to the root of why I was doing what I was doing. See, there's a root to it. And, you, and sometimes we'll think, we've gotten over that. You will. You'll be done buried it so far that you're thinking, mm, child, that don't bother me no more. I'm good. Until you get to talking about it or somebody say something and you just hear it a little something in your voice and be like, dear God, I'm not over that. I'm not over that and I don't want that to take control of my life. So Lord, here I am. You know what I'm dealing with. You come and get it, Father. Like only you can. And he said, just walk with me. Just trust me. Just believe. Keep walking. And you, you'll look and time will be in the past. You don't have to, you don't even know, can't remember when. Yeah. And you look up and you wake up one morning, you be like, oh my goodness. I ain't cussing no more. You know, I'm just saying, just look, whatever. I'm not doing this or that. I just know I'm talking about my vices now. Yeah, what I was going through. But yeah, I, you'll look up and you'll be like, oh, what you, without me, what? Trying. Because that's, every time I was trying, I'm telling you was not working and then I just said okay I'm gonna come as I am because they used to religion would say that to come as y'all and then when you come as y'all it beating you upside the head <laughs> you come as y'all but then what they turn around and they beating you Yo, you got on don't you come in here looking like uh uh-uh, uh don't you do that uh uh-uh. uh Jesus you said to come Am I coming for you to get it or let him get it? I'm casting my cares, my cares on him, not you. Not you. And so you, find, you, you go look and you have people and you wonder, and these people don't go to church to this day. And I've had an individual tell me, so there's not something I'm just making an assumption. So the folks in the church just versus the people out in the street, you might as well just stay on. And then like religion and told you got to do this, do that. And then I'm saying, I can't do this. So I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to either come to him or what? Are you just going to give up and say, you know what? Just don't worry about it. I'll just stay on out there and deal with it later. Maybe, maybe. No, because you don't know that later. You don't want him to catch you and it's undone and you haven't received the love. So come on. As you are, come on. Whatever you're doing, still do, come on. Don't you worry about that and don't let anyone, I told you, rewrite your story. I try to add in little pieces. No, it's your story. It's yours. Mama, daddy, sister, brother, cousin, it's yours. Now be respectful. I ain't saying respect, disrespect some, you know, your elder or whatever. But I'm just saying, it is your story. And they have to be remindful and, and respect that. That it is your story. I know a lot of things I tried to keep Bree, Bree and Brandon from experiencing. And no, that ain't how that was supposed to work. They had to experience that. So when they feel it or touch the burn, they'll know, oh, mm-mm. Y'all know we done had some things happen in your life. And you say what? You ain't never got to worry about me doing that again. You don't ever have to worry about me doing that. I hear you, Lord. I'm good. Amen. Amen. Let him get it. And all is well. So through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. Grace has brought me safe this far. And grace will lead me home. Grace has brought us safe, y'all, this far. He's kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Even when it looked like whatever, it was still his grace and his mercy keeping. That could have been worse than what it was. But we tell him thank you. You tell him, thank you. Thank you for the experiences, Lord God. I thank you for those experiences. Now I know what decision and choice I'll I'll, I'll make a different choice. I'll choose you because I choose life. I want to choose life and I want to live it abundantly. 
He said he'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Yes. Above that? Yes. Above it? Like, and he does every time. And I know some of you, if I was to go around the room right now, you have one of those experiences. Yes. Whether it was an immediate or you waited patiently on him. Because I've had some immediates and then I've waited but didn't get moved by time. Still not moved by time because he's not moved by time. So you ain't worried about it and you ain't addressing it, Jesus. Neither am I. But I thank you. I'm going to keep praising you right here. I'm going to keep right here praising you because he deserves it. He's awesome. He's mighty. And grace will lead me home. Grace won't show me the way how to get there. And you know how we'll give someone direction. You go up there. But had, there's been a couple of times I've had to say, come on, I'll show you. And I'll take them where they need to go. That's grace taking us. It said he'll, leave, he'll lead us home. He's taking us. He ain't trying to show you. He, so he's saying, I'm with you. I'm in you. I'll take you. You're safe thus far. Mother already told us about that invisible home. We're of his kingdom, Jesus, not the kingdom of darkness. We don't identify with that. Invisible kingdom, an invisible heaven, our home. And when it's time, we're prepared and ready, making preparation, just trusting him and believing him. No fear in any area of your life. No fear. No fear because it will try to creep in. Yeah. Worrying and stress. It, it'll try. But guess what? I ain't no stay there. Mm -mm. Picking myself up. Mm -mm. Run that by him. Acknowledging him. And he'll say, mm, nah, that ain't lining up. Okay. Amen, Lord. Cast it down. Cast it down. And pick up and walk on with him. He's been so good. Through it all. Whether good Bad or ugly. Good, bad, or ugly. I know sometimes I see the t shirt had a, the Seminoles, the good, and the Gators, the bad, and what the hurricanes, the ugly. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. My, my good would be the Gators, but amen. But through the good, the bad, and the ugly, y'all, that's why I say it's fun in this. There is fun in him. And like I said, I'm having the most fun of my life. Just walking with him. Just trusting him. Just sharing and encouraging people. Sometimes he just wants you to encourage someone. Be open to that. To encourage people. They just want to hear that. Oh, that's not right. Now, not trying to force, but yeah, now because he did it like this for me. I understand. You're laying with your story now. Because that might have been how he broke it for you. Might be different for you. But guess what? I'm just going to share with you. This is how he did it for me now, but you, now that's when you tell him, you, you ask him, you seek him, you talk to him. Just like I'm talking to y'all right now. Okay, Lord, I heard what the sister said, and I'm trusting you, and I'm dealing with A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I don't know how many of them did. <laughs> X, Y, all the way down to X, Y, Z. But it don't matter how many. You give them to him. And watch him work it out. Every time, y'all. He's just so good. Amazing grace is more than enough for you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, Pastor Omar Ellison, Lady Ellison, and the Salt and Light family would like to thank you for joining us in today's broadcast. You can visit us at 1350 East Mayhan Drive, which our service times are every Sunday at 12 noon and every Wednesday at 6 p.m. You can also visit us at Facebook and YouTube at Salt and Light Covenant Church or visit us at our website at saltandlightcovenant.com. We thank you again, and until next time, you be blessed.